Hello, and welcome to episode 26 of Mishmash Mayhem. Mishmash Mayhem. The podcast where we take the schoolyard conversation of, hey, which one of these fictional characters would win in a fight? And we talk about it on a podcast. That's what this is. Yay. Oh, I love podcasts. I, I, I don't listen to any podcasts. Oh, you should. There's some good well, ones out there. Yeah, but I mean, there's only so much time in the world, isn't there? And there's oh, lots of things to do. That is true. So... My priorities are, are games. Yes, that's fair. Rather than listening. So, you know, that's where most of my time goes. There's never enough time to do everything. There's, there's just not. So I don't. That's fair and perfectly reasonable. I'm Chris. I'm Sleepy Wade. Oh, Sleepy I'm not, Wade. I mean, I'm not actually sleepy, but I mean, we just talked about this in real life. And now we're going to talk about it <laughs> in podcast life. In pod life. Pod life. Pod, pod life. life. But like, for some reason, whenever this microphone comes out, I just, I just start getting yawny. I just start yawning all over the place. And there's no reason for it. I'm not tired. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. You know, I got up at a reasonable time. I went to bed at a reasonable time. I did neither of those. Well, you're on nights. You don't count. <laughs> Especially as you were moving from not nights to nights. Like, it's, it's even worse. Yes. Uh, um, I went to bed at quarter to eight this morning and got up at half eleven. Hooray. I went to bed at just gone twelve. And got up at about half eight or so. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. See, look, I don't, I don't know where it comes from. I don't know what it is. It's just like about putting headphones in my ear and sitting down and like there's no other music or noises around me. So, as many of you are probably aware, because you're probably locked up in houses and places, the world has gone green in a way. Oh, yeah, I mean... Mother Nature is so happy. Mother Nature is, yeah, she's pretty happy. It would be really interesting to see, actually, like the effects on like average day temperatures. Well, have you not seen the thing that um, it's the canals in Venice have run clear for the first time in years, and loads of species yeah. of fish that nobody had seen before have come back. Um, yeah, I saw that. Dolphins have come back to the coast of Italy. Uh, the air pollution in New York is down by, I think, eighteen percent. I didn't even think New York had done that much yet. Hmm. Is it? It's crazy. It's just like, hey, this epidemic might kill people, but it's saving the planet. Yeah, but I mean, the planet's going to get saved anyway. The planet will always sort itself out. <laughs> yeah, it is sorting itself out by killing the people. I mean, to be fair, I've, I've voiced my opinions very clearly, but also slightly in a way that almost made it seem like I'd be joking and his people thought I was being too serious. But at work, I was just like, yeah, just like, don't go wrong. It's It's bad, but everyone's gotta die might as well might as well do this to do something also, <laughs> like it's bad but it's actually not really that bad because the fatality rate compared to the infection rate is so minimal well yeah but it is bad because it's it's the ability to infect super easily yeah it's a very infectious bad. disease like, which is bad like, if i have the flu right yeah. don't go wrong if i'm in a close proximity with other people for ages a couple of them might get the oh, flu. i saw this actually today the um, uh, the flu has an infection rate of 1.8 and this has an infection rate of three yeah it's pretty bad i'm not entirely sure what those numbers mean but but no neither am i but you know and they were sort of saying although it's like seems like a minimal difference it's actually like crazy oh maybe it's like an orders of magnitude thing you know like an a magnitude what what's the difference between an eight and a seven earthquake it's like well one is literally 10 times more energy maybe yeah maybe it's, maybe it's that. so it's you know what 15 times or so more more effective i don't know the point was hello to all you people at home we are also at home i mean handily i can still go out and do my essential business where required mm -hmm. there's been a whole multitude of po posts on my facebook about people doing loads of shit online with loads of people that they yeah. probably should speak to anyway i mean i know that you don't necessarily have time to do things that you would have normally done in the evening which is why you now have this free time but it's really cool so you know get social with people you can do That's anything it. and not enough about the depressing state of the universe we're here to do something fun and light entertainmenty. so what are we doing today we're going to talk about death battles a battle to the death because that's light-hearted entertainment it is it absolutely is so yeah for those of you who you know you maybe you're new because of this uh, whole epidemic or something um you in know this what? show Genuinely, yeah. um, if you're new, that's really cool, and thanks for being here and listening and stuff. But also, why start at number 26? <laughs> well, yeah, maybe someone says, oh, listen to this episode. I think it was particularly good. That's true. Or maybe they just catch it, and they're like, oh, listen to this one at the end. 
because there's there's no real story arc, is there? Uh, no, I suppose not. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, this is Mishmash Mayhem. What we do is we're going to take two of our favourite fictional characters from various universes. Could be books, could be games, could be comics, could be uh, what other types of media are there? Um, Song. Films. Song? We haven't had a song character yet. No. I'm not, no I mean, it's not really a surprise. I don't know who you could have. Uh, <laughs> Maybe Wonder, Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy. And Young Nasty Man. <laughs> uh, I mean, Young Nasty Man would definitely win that fight. <laughs> That's because he's got the power of flight. And mind bullets. Yeah. Oh, man. That's that's really tempted to put on the list. One of the lists now, Nasty Man. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we can say we've done that media. Um, anyway, we take two of our favourite fictional characters and we put them up in a fight to the death. Each episode, we have obviously two contestants. Uh, sometimes there is a winner from the previous episode because we have our valued hall of fame where fighters retire once they have earned three victories they've earned their mish their mash and their mayhem on today's episode we have one contender who has already earned his mish he earned it last week no two weeks ago last episode Fortnite. last episode um against rogue and this combatant is john mclean from die hard yeah uh, don't ask me how he won this fight. No, no one really knows. Um, um, because Rogue couldn't get her clothes off quick enough. Yes, that is exactly what happened. Um, that's so <laughs> stupid when you say it like that. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce both the characters, starting with the reigning champion. Um, and then we're going to go through the kind of things like their personality, what they're like, what kind of things they bring to a death fight, and any equipment or weapons that they may have at their disposal we're also going to ask them other questions like what shampoo do they use if they use it at all and are they left or right-handed that one's actually that there's probably is a good answer for that one i mean most of these ones i just kind of make up on the fly but that one there could actually be an answer for to add some intrigue i'm pretty sure my character who i'm going to introduce later won't use shampoo interesting uh, I'm mm. pretty sure John McClane's right-handed. Okay. And also probably doesn't use shampoo. Because he's bald. Well, I mean, he's not bald to start. He's not bald no. at the version we're bringing in, which is like young buff John McClane. <laughs> I, than... That's my thing. Uh, anytime I watch Die Hard, I always go, oh yeah, Bruce Willis had hair. Yeah. <laughs> in my mind, he's it's, just bald. <laughs> it's like, wow, Bruce Willis looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, once we've introduced both the characters, we're then going to determine where they're going to fight. We're going to roll famed icosahedron the die of death. The die of death. The die of death. To work out where they where they're fighting, and we'll make up some stuff uh, based on how we feel on the day about about that arena because it's more fun that way. Okay. Also, it saves planning twenty things ahead, which is a pain in the ass. Um, so let's let's get down to it. As mentioned, today's first entrant is the victor from last week. It is John McLean. John McLean is a badass from Die Hard. He is a policeman. And I don't remember what police force, so I'm, I'm literally Googling it. Uh, NYPD. Yes. He, is a, he was a police cop man in the New York City Police Department. He's now a detective lieutenant. Ooh, get him. He has gone through some rough times. And by rough times, I mean he's been involved in five high-profile terrorist incidents, um, including... An attack on a tower to to get access to some bearer bonds where a man fell out and died. That's very unfortunate. Uh, an incident at an airport and surrounding small church where uh, terrorists were trying to rescue another terrorist. And uh, their plane crashed by exploding in midair and it was all very sad. Um, he's been involved in a revenge plot from the brother, uh, spoilers by the way, of... The man who fell to his death and who was also trying to steal a load of money. Every every time in this podcast you've given a spoiler warning, it's always been after the spoiler. Yeah, I know. That's not that's okay. why I do it. <laughs> it's not it's not a spoiler for Die Hard or Die Hard Free. Like, come on, those films are so old. <laughs> like if it was I don't know, what's a new film that's come out that might be okay. Like all the films that are currently recently been postponed. But if it was a new film, I'd be like, yeah, spoilers. Or a new series, I'd be like, yeah, spoilers. You know, like um, The Mandalorian, right? If I was to say mm. things about that, it's not been out a huge deal of time. That's that's spoilers. But for this, it's not spoilers anymore. You should know it. And if you don't, watch it and then you'll know. 
he got involved in a terrorist incident where they were like internet blackmailing the world or something. I don't really remember the pinnacle of it, but you know, he shot a terrorist by shooting himself. Very sad. And then I do absolutely remember nothing about the fifth film because it was just ludicrous and it was a bit poo. But he killed some terrorists there as well. Uh, do you remember how many terrorists I said he'd killed in my fun fact file? No, but let me see if I can add it up. So there's if you nine can in... add it up? Yeah. Wow, good good luck. Okay, go. Well, there's nine in the first film, isn't there? Uh, probably, yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair, there's not like a huge group in the second film. There's probably about the same. Uh, I'd say the second film, at the end, there's a good 12 at least. Well, maybe not 12. There's a good like eight at least at the end. And that's at the end. All right. Well, we'll call it about 20 then. And then he doesn't do much killing in the third film until right at the end. Mainly running around doing puzzles. Is I reckon he's killed about... about in, well, in, in the first three films, is this? Or overall? Uh, throughout five films. Out of five? Oh, I have no idea how many he kills in four and five. Um, I'm going to guess about 60. That's not far off. 73. That's a, that's a good kill-death ratio because he hasn't died once. Oh, yeah. Otherwise fucking MVP. Yeah. Like, that is... What? That's almost three tactical nukes in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. That's pretty good. I wanted to earn one of them once, and I thought that was good. But good. I didn't actually earn it because I didn't have it equipped. But I did get enough kills for it. But yeah, um, so as you can tell by that, he is a badass. I mean, he is one resilient boy, one resilient mofo, one resilient man, one resilient McLean. Um, he's got a, a badass, get the job done, collateral damage attitude. Not for, not necessarily for innocence. In fact, definitely not for innocence, but definitely for things that don't matter, like cars and buildings and property F- fuck property yeah. who needs property you know i mean he's well famous in it for dropping a computer chair with a pc and some c4 down an elevator shaft and blowing up the second floor of an office building just to kill some terrorists who were equally who were killing people i was gonna but, say it wasn't necessarily just to kill some terrorists it was to save police lives yes yes to kill people then save police lives there you go. Um, he, he's like, you know, when you see people on the side of the road and they've got like the signs, like the like the will, will dance for food or whatever, and it'd be mm. like the will blow up building for to save lives. That would yeah, be the sign. Yeah. yeah, he's um, he will get the job done, it, even if it means doing something unorthodox or against the rules, as long as it isn't endangering people, as long as it isn't directly endangering the public. I feel. Yeah. I don't feel he'd actively do something if he knew that he was going to kill some people no his thing is about indirectly endangering the terrorists absolutely yeah yeah and who doesn't want to endanger terrorists Ter- other terrorists i mean um terrorist that's... mum <laughs> terrorist mum <laughs> no not a terrorist mum the terrorists mum yeah that's what I'm, that's what a, te- a terrorist mum would be a much scarier thing oh well you know but yeah so that um he's a hardy boy i mean he's been in many a fist fight. I mean, uh, in the first film, for example, he's running around this tower. He has no shoes. That's important. Oh, and the list of things that happen to him is he he's in like one fist fight. He's in where he falls down some stairs. He's in like a gunfight where he gets shot through the shoulder. He gets he walks on a load of broken glass. He jumps off a building with a fire hose strapped around his waist and then smashes through a window. He has another fist fight. He then goes upstairs looking like an absolute... Oh, he falls down an elevator shaft and manages to catch. He just looks like a wreck, but he still keeps on going because he's a hardy boy. He's got to be. You know, he's got to save his, uh, his estranged wife at the time. No, I uh, separated from his wife. Uh, but anyway, other than being a hardy boy who loves to just get shit done, what does he bring? Well, he's an NYPD man, so... It's classically going to bring a gun. How many cartridges, bullets do we decide it had in it? 12? Yes. Yeah, I don't remember what kind of gun we decided it was, but it's a handgun. He's good with a handgun as well. Um, like, really good with a handgun. The kind of good with a handgun where he's against two terrorists. They have the upper hand because they're both pointing... Well, one of them is pointing a gun at his wife and is hiding behind his wife, like holding a hostage. And the other one's holding a machine gun at him and he gets headshot on the dude with the machine gun and shoulder shot 
not hearing his wife on the other guy before either of them even know what's happened. Uh, you know, he's pretty good with a gun. But after all, after all that said and done, he is just a regular man. Uh, we've had many people in here, you, you know, who aren't just regular people, but he is definitely from the real universe, if not taken with a pinch of salt on how much he can... Uh, he's real, but with action movie protagonist buff. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, and he's well known for his catchphrases. yippee ki yay mother. Was, was there an end to that? Sorry, I, this is a PG Fucker. stream, isn't it? What, did you say fucker? That's really rude. Oh, no. Oh, I did. Gonna, you, you're going to get us fired. No, we're, we just have to put an explicit stamp on it. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure we do that every episode because I slip up. We just don't 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 use the, 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 the nasty word. What? B- bum. <laughs> That is John McClane. Oh, look, it tells me here what weapons he has. A Sig Sauer P220 or a Beretta 92. Let's go Beretta 92. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, it's the, the one that appears in all five diehards. Let's go with that. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's John McClane. All right. Facing John McClane today is somebody who I alluded to last episode with the clue that it is a video game character from a game based on comics who starts as a young, naive character but grows into an absolute badass by surviving zombies. Okay. I'm going to guess that it's from The Last of Us. It's not from The Last of Us. Okay. I'm out of ideas. It is from the Telltale series of The Walking Dead. Ah. Yeah. Uh, and this character is Clementine. You're bringing an orange. Yeah. John McClane's going to shoot that orange. Job done. Orange juice. Let's go. Now, at, at full discretion, I understand there has been four of The Walking Dead games, but I haven't yet played the fourth one. So my research stops at episode three to stop myself having spoilers because I will play it. I just haven't got around to it. That's fair, man. You know, you bring in your character. Yeah. We always, we always, I say always, I mean, we often define what era of this character we're bringing in. So Yeah. So it's going to be Clementine's sort of post uh, The Walking Dead and New Frontier, that sort of era. To be fair, I'm pretty sure season four is set very shortly after season three. So there's probably not a lot of difference between the characters, the character like season three to season four. Yeah. But yeah, just because I haven't yet played season four, I haven't, I've deliberately not researched anything from the last one. So if she happens to do anything amazingly badass in the last one, disclaimer, I don't know about it. Please don't tweet me. Or die. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, if she dies, I don't know about that either. Yeah. If she happens to do something the opposite of really badass. Yeah. Again, please don't tweet me. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> but yeah, in season one, uh, you play as Lee, lovable, bumbling murderer. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Why is he a lovable murderer? That doesn't make much sense. Well, it, well the game starts with you uh, in the back of a police car on the way to jail because you've been arrested for murdering somebody because your wife was cheating on you with him. I see. Obviously, I mean, I, no, murder is never justified, but there is potential for sort of saying that's a, at least an excuse. Crimes of passion and all that, people kind of understand. Well, ignoring that fact that he has killed somebody, he's like a really nice guy and he's just like lovely. Well, I suppose that depends how you play the game. You could make him an absolute dick because as is the nature of sort of interactive media, you very much decide how people behave. But yeah, you're generally supposed to get that he's a nice guy. Um, And he he spends the entire season one of this game looking after Clementine and teaching her how to survive in a zombie apocalypse. Hooray. Yeah, because he does think, because you find her not long into episode one, because you're sort of rummaging through houses trying to find supplies and stuff and then um you get attacked by her babysitter who has become a zombie and she's hiding in her treehouse <laughs> treehouse let's go yeah so you then sort of take her under your wing and she travels around with you and stuff um and yeah you do things like like you cut her hair short which is like a nice little scene where she's like oh now my hair looks really stupid and you're like yes but zombies won't grab you <laughs> zombies at least they won't grab you by the hair yeah you know it's it's harder for them to grab you uh and then there's like a little bit where you teach her how to fire a gun and stuff you know just sort of little survival skills it's but it's it's sort of it's really wholesomely done because it's like oh you're teaching this like young girl how to do all of these things and she's a bit rubbish at everything but you have to be like really reassuring and you basically become like her surrogate dad throughout the whole thing are you suggesting that I should cut my hair if there's a zombie apocalypse? Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah, you have long hair. I do. I also, I mean, my hair isn't as long as yours, but it's not sure. I would probably cut my hair in a zombie apocalypse too. All right. All right I mean, I wouldn't it's... make it my like, first priority. My first priority would be get get somewhere safe and secure and stuff. 
It's not like I could be like, God, there's zombies outside. Well, better cut my hair. <laughs> just get this. I mean, to be fair, scissors are a good weapon to have anyway. Scissors don't yeah. need reloading. They don't, but ten, generally speaking, you want a blunt object because a sharp one will get stuck in people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nothing serrated. Mm. But yeah, so there's that. Um, and then spoilers for people who do want to play it and such <gasps> and haven't. I know. <laughs> I mean, by your, by your logic, you know, this game's about sort of what six years old now i could probably have done the spoilers afterwards but you know but the season one does end with your character getting bitten and infected and then there's the bit which i mean if you look at pretty much any sort of heartbreaking decision in video games sort of list or article it will probably be on there where you'll you sort of get her to chain you to a radiator and then you can either tell her to shoot you so you don't become a zombie or to leave and just sort of let you turn but they, obviously you don't have to put her through the fact that she shot you. I see. Yeah, and it, it, I mean, that's quite a harrowing way to finish a game. I would make her shoot you. Yeah, I, I did too. Yay! But, but but my wife didn't. She couldn't do it. She couldn't make the little, like, the eight-year-old girl shoot her in the face. I mean, it doesn't have to be the face. It probably should be. But it doesn't I mean, have to I be. think it, it does, because that's how the animation works. But, but yeah, so, I mean, there's that. Then the second series is... That 16 months later, so near enough a year and a half, and very shortly into the game, she gets separated in the land. She's like lost in the woods on her own. Oh, that's, but, that's know, not ideal. No, but you know, she's been, she's a bit more grown up now. She's taken on the things that you've learned, like that she's learned in the first game. Like she has her short hair. She knows how weapons work. It's really cool. You can see the growth that you've taught her. Uh, and in this one, you play as her. So, you know, you can the decisions that make her really cool and like the first thing you do uh is you find like a little dog in the woods and you're like oh this dog's starving because you know there's no one looking after it and you sort of play with this dog and it's like a really nice heartwarming moment but then as soon as you find food the dog like sort of bites you and tears your arm open and you have to kill it (laughs) and it's just like oh and it's like a really good way of showing how in the apocalypse things can go from really nice and lovely to really horrible in an instant and you know it's not like it's the dog's fault a starving dog would attack you for food because there's instinct you then like with your arm sort of torn open stumble around and find like a farm and you sort of ask the people who are on the farm for help because you need medical aid because you're bleeding out pretty fast um, and they're like oh no you've clearly been bitten by a zombie and she's like i haven't it's a dog And they were like, no, it's probably a zombie. Yeah, the way they decide to sort of figure out whether or not it was a zombie or if you were bitten by a dog is they lock you in the shed and sort of say, if we come back in the morning and you haven't turned into a zombie, it was a dog and we'll give you medical supplies. But we're not wasting wasting them on you just for you to turn. I mean, that seems fair enough. Uh, Yes, although she makes the point she would definitely have bled out by the morning. Well, well, you know. So mm. it's a risky take in a zombie apocalypse. Well, that's it. But then to sort of show you how absolutely awesome and badass she is, she manages to like escape the being locked in the shed. I think there's like a broken wood panel or something at the back, and you like kick it out. Um, you then like proper stealth into their house, find like medical supplies, like um, an antiseptic and like a needle and thread, and sew your arm back up. And it's cool. You know that's hard to do. And I, I, I understand that you have to do these things to survive, but I don't really wouldn't like the idea of sewing my own arm up. No. No. <laughs> but, you know, she's cool. Um, but then these people are like, oh, you didn't turn into a zombie. I guess you were telling the truth. And she's like, well, fuck yeah, <laughs> I told you. So then they decide that you can stay with them and, you know, you hang out with them for that game. Uh, and you learn a few other sort of cool survival skills throughout that one. Like, you learn... The best way to kill a zombie in this game is you do the whole sweep the leg so they fall over and then stab them in the face. Fair. Yeah, that yeah, seems like a pretty cool. good way. Um, that's it. So you, le- you learn, it's cool. You just sort of learn more things, more cool survival techniques off different people you meet. And it's like, oh, yeah. And you can sh- see sort of Clementine growing up and learning all these different things. One of the members of this group that you join in the second game is pregnant. And about halfway through the game, she gives birth and then is pretty quickly killed after giving birth. And you oh, end wow, up being wow. the one, one who looks after the child. That sounds like a film I've seen. Yeah. Which film was it? It was um, oh that one that was on Netflix that everyone was raving about, where the woman's walking around with a blindfold on. The uh, Quiet Place? No, no, the other one, Bird Box. Yeah, Bird Box. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen either of those two films, but yes. I haven't watched The Quiet Place. I watched Bird Box. Bird Box was worth watching 
but it definitely wasn't like I, I, I didn't jizz in my pants at it sure I mean not that I do it any film but you know it wasn't like amazing it was just good that's fair but yeah so you start looking after this baby uh it kind of ends up with at the end you have uh again there's a, the game sort of ends with like a harrowing decision you have to pick between your options are yeah there's like two of the characters you've met in this game um have very different opinions on how you should can carry on living and how and how you should raise the child and the such and you can either pick to go with one of them but in doing so it would result in the other one dying or being killed by the other uh, or you can pick to go with neither of them and just be like go off on your own mm-hmm. make up your so yeah it, i mean it's again quite a heartfelt ending and sort of not really a happy tone to finish a game on but then the third game uh takes place a few years later by this point clem like you play as another new character called javier who i haven't met a single person who's played that game and thought javier was a good character <laughs> yeah, good in the like good slash evil or good in the they are a bad character i don't like them just at all because they're annoying no, in, yeah in the quality of their character right yeah, yeah. Uh, you know they are a good person again they are a good person they are not evil they want to do right and help people and such i don't know i just compared to i think playing as lee in the first one or clem in the second one uh javier is just not a particularly good character like well-written character in my opinion i yeah. mean i suppose if you hadn't had the first two games he might be fine but i think in comparison he's just not as good as those two mm. but you meet like clementine in this game and she sort of helps you with things and this is the other thing as well where you've already sort of seen clementine through the first two games most people just pick their decisions on what benefits her more than actually what benefits the character you're actually playing as hello well because you know you've got a background with her and you appreciate how cool she is but yeah she doesn't have the baby with her in this game and you find out it is because when again on her own and trying to raise this child she ended up joining like a group of people called the new frontier um and living in like their society for a while but when the baby got sick uh, she stole medicine from their doctor to try and treat it um and because she stole from them they exiled her so she's back to living on her own and they've still got the child which she is very unhappy about because obviously she's been looking after this baby bear, bear. so yeah you you sort of help her throughout the game and it t- and then you have much sort of running ins with this new frontier group and uh, ultimately, because uh, uh, it turns out Javier's brother is a member of the group. So, you know, you sort of spend time with them and she's like, oh, I don't think you should trust them. And then it turns out, oh, you shouldn't have trusted them. Who knew? And then there's zombies. Oh. <laughs> zombies and people. Oh, no. I know. What's worse, zombies or people? Um, in most zombie things, it's usually the people, isn't it? Yeah. Because I guess the thing is that zombies are mindless. So, you know, yes, they're horrible and they'll eat you and tear you to shit. Um, but people consciously dick you over, whereas zombies just sort of do it because they they'll, they run on instinct. Yeah, I mean, it'd be the same as if, you know, like, wolves uprised. Yeah. But you turned into a wolf if you got bitten by a wolf. Yeah, yeah. lycanthropy. Yeah, werewolves rather than just regular wolves. Bloody people. People are jerks. Yeah. Yeah, don't be a jerk, especially now. All right. It's like if you go outside and got bitten by a shark, that shark isn't evil. But if you went outside and somebody coughed in your mouth, that person's probably evil. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if someone manages to get close enough to you though to cough in to cop to cough into your mouth, I would also question what you were doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not saying but, that justifies what they did. I'm just saying I'm questioning what you were doing. So, but throughout this game, you can see that Clem has become sort of very capable at looking after herself. She's very efficient at killing zombies. She's learned to drive. Even though she's probably about fourteen by this point. I mean, you can you can learn to drive functionally pretty easily. The thing that makes learning to drive to get your license hard is all the legal stuff about obeying laws. But in a zombie apocalypse, you probably don't need to worry about that. Yeah, you could learn to drive pretty easily, I think. Yeah. Even if if you were young. My my point is, yeah, she is young for somebody who typically drives, um, and she has learned to drive during the zombie apocalypse. Well, I mean, you you know, pressure. Makes yeah, yeah. results. Oh no, it's a good idea. I'm just sort of saying, you know, these are things she's done. Um, you also see her like bartering with people, like she's sort of quite ruthless and like she goes out and like finds supplies and stuff in the wasteland for people so she can do trades and stuff. Like she's just really cool. But yeah, and then at the end of the game, she finds out where the baby, now toddler, is sort of being kept and leaves to go and rescue him. 
And then the fourth game is her rescuing him. But as previously mentioned, I haven't played that. So I don't know what happens. She probably rescues him. Probably, yes. And Or she goes to rescue him and it turns out... How old is he at this point? Uh, he's sort of, I, I don't know, young. He's a mob boss and he's making millions on people's woe and zombie despair. And she has to make the horrible choice of trying to talk no jutsu him into sense or to shoot him through the head like what's his nugget in the first game i'm calling it now hmm. well we wondered if she would uh die at the end and i'd say sort of say to him yeah you have to like shoot me but i don't know but yeah so that's sort of a brief overview of how clem grew up during the zombie apocalypse like I say she's quite sort of sufficient in fighting and effective ways of killing people or zombies because essentially they're interchangeable um and she uh would probably have a knife and a gun on her at all times Fair. but i guess in a you know she wouldn't have she probably wouldn't be as trained with her gun as say john mcclain is because you know police training is probably a bit more rigorous yeah but she she would certainly be competent yeah yeah because, you know, she's shot many a zombie over her time. I've shot many zombie over the years. I, I don't know why I was going with that. <laughs> but I think, um, really, at this juncture, what we need to do is uh, find out where they're fighting. So I think it's time that we roll the die of death. The die of death. Um, right, are you ready? Yes. So today's fight is taking place in a matador ring. In a matador Is there a bull there? Of course there's a ball there. Of course there's a ball there. We didn't need to ask the question, but we did to affirm it to the audience. But, I mean, of course there's a ball there. Why wouldn't there be a ball there? How big is a matador ring? They're quite big, aren't they? I honestly have no idea. But, yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, they're, they're fairly wide. I'm just looking at images. I'm trying to trying to guess how big they are. There's, like, there's a lot of room. They're not, they're not small affairs. Hey, and it also means that uh, we'll have an audience uh, for this uh, match again. Well, that... It's gonna make things a little awkward because you know traditionally there's like they had like big arenas like coliseums but Spanish right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just thinking both of our characters their main weapons are guns. <laughs> How much are they gonna be shooting? If no, I don't think either of them are gonna want to kill innocent people in the crowd. Uh, sure <laughs> not. It depends how confident they are in the shot, doesn't it? I suppose. Yeah. Tradition dictates that. Bruce Willis starts in the ball ring. Not Bruce Willis. <laughs> Not Bruce Willis. John McClane starts in the ball ring, which is going to be awkward because there's <laughs> a ball there. But I guess, I guess, is the ball going to get introduced at the same time as the combatant, or is? Uh, usually, they come in after, don't they? Like the person will, the matador will already be in the ring, and a ball yeah, will be yeah, released. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. They'll... Yeah. So I figure once both people are in the ring, the mat- the ball will come out. Yeah, okay, that makes that makes that makes sense. Then John McClane already trying to hustle the ball, which I have some doubts in my mind about <laughs> how well he would do. He, I mean, if it was in a Die Hard film, he would absolutely nail it. And by nail it, I mean he'd like be dodging around. He'd probably get thrown across the air, and then he'd probably manage to throw a terrorist into him. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves, he's in the ball ring, and the crowd, the crowds are cheering. I'm there. You're there. Your mum's there. You know, everyone's there. I like that you've uh, decided I've taken my mum there. Well, you know, I feel she'd, she'd, you know, she'd I like reckon, to out. Yeah, yeah, especially with this watch, young Bruce Willis, because that's who John McClane, that's who young John McClane right. is. Yeah, yeah, especially to watch um, young John McClane. I don't think she's actually a, a fan of Bruce Willis, really. Oh, like yeah, her, her thing. She's always been more of a Mel Gibson person, like you know, pre mental racism, like back when he was at least a closet mental racist. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Bruce Willis is there. Someone else needs to join. John McClane's there. He's getting ready. And then Clementine comes in at the other end of the arena. They ha- they lock eyes across the ring, being like, yes, I need to kill you. Yes, I need to kill you too. We're in the crowd, but obviously it's much less of a crowd than a matador ring would usually have because everyone has to sit two metres apart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But we're there eating popcorn. I don't like popcorn. I'm eating... Uh, um, Churros. That's fair. I don't like churros. Well, there you go. I'll have your churros. You can have my popcorn. We'll, we'll double well, down. Yeah, I like it. We're swapping snacks and people are looking at us going, oh, they shouldn't be that close. I mean, we're doing... Yeah, but we're doing it like, you know, responsibly. <laughs> well, you know, we're, I walk to the, the middle of the seat between us and I put my snack down and then I go back. And then you come, you take mine and put yours back and then I have to go in again and pick up yours. It's fine. Then, then we air five. Pow. <laughs> 
And then just as uh, John McClane and Clementine are about to engage in combat, a ball is released into the ring. All right, I've got two questions. Okay, I've got one question. Let's get. Let's alternate. What's your first question? <laughs> How far does Clementine walk into the ring? You know, is it like literally, I'm still against the wall, or I'm walking a decent way into the ring into like a? I feel like she'd be an equal way in to John McClane, just on opposite side. Okay, yeah. So they're probably not. They're probably they're both probably... about a third in, maybe with like a third in between them. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. All right. And included in that middle third between them is a, is a ball. Well, I mean, was that your question? No. That's a statement. Okay. So the ball has risen up out the middle of the arena rather than... Sure. That's even cooler. Dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> Dramatic. <laughs> so, okay. So now we need to note that this is a matador ring with a stage trap door in the middle. <laughs> yes. This might become important later. It probably won't, but it might. Uh, no, my question was going to be: Is the bull a zombie? Why would why would the bull be a zombie? I don't know. Just because Clementine is from the world of zombies, a matador yeah. ring is not from the world of zombies. A matador ring is from the world of Spanish people having fun. Okay, that's fine. So I don't, I don't I think mean, there's that, any. That, 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 that's a reasonable thing. I just wanted to double check. Yeah, I don't think there's any grounds to justify the the bull being a zombie. Okay. In this instance. What was your second question? What Obviously, you said she normally comes equipped with a, a gun and a knife. Not worried mm-hmm. about the knife right now. That might come into contact, into a thing later. What kind of gun does she have? It would probably be a similar sort of gun to what John McClane has, just like a oh. standard issue American handgun. Oh, so pistols at dawn, but not at dawn in a matador ring with a bull. Yeah. Pistols I mean, at would... time. Sangria to the winger, winner. <laughs> pistols at high noon yeah. in a matador ring with a bull. What a duel. I mean, that is a dangerous duel. It is. I wouldn't want to be in that duel. I mean, is it a troll? Because yes. it's free. <laughs> because it's free, like a, a trial. Oh, maybe. It's more of a standoff, I think, if there's more than two. I mean, it can be a standoff with two. Right, so the the bull is directly in between them. Yes. What? I mean, I don't know how true it is the bulls are attracted to red, but it's a stereotype and we'll go with it unless you can, unless you have good anecdotal evidence otherwise. I don't. Okay, so what colour is Little Bo Peep in, Clementine? <laughs> uh, I want to say purple. Oh, in the new frontier, she's wearing a red jacket. Well, okay, let's go. That's the evidence we wanted. <laughs> uh, and then, like, blue jeans. But John McClane won't be wearing red. But, like, a white T-shirt. It's like a uh, Czech red She's, for the most of it, actually, she appears to be in like a, a white t-shirt with like a blue vest under it. She does have a red jumper or something tied around her waist in most of these pictures, but she's not actually wearing it. Well, I think that's more red than old McLean has. Okay. I mean, he's not covered in blood yet. Uh, at that point, then, and then he'd be wearing more red. You know, he just wears whites and blues and regular hero cop stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to get a, g- a good gauge for who the bull was going to be more attracted to. But yeah, it does seem like initially then, if we're going on the red theory, the bull will go for Clementine. Yeah. Okay, right. So it's begun. A bull pops up. They are going to... Obviously, they both know they need to whop each other. Yes. They're, they're probably both going to draw for their guns because why wouldn't they? Uh, well, yeah. Well, because what is John McClane's uh, thing on killing a teenage girl? <laughs> to the death where he knows he has to okay so it's like you know she is the equivalent of a terrorist in this in this um thing to him okay do you know do you know what i mean fine if that's, yeah if, that, if that's what you want to go for well i mean if you maybe the sort of thing he'd do it and regret it later or feel bad yeah. about it later yeah we, we've always uh, had the the canon here that these people when they've come in have known when they've seen each other that they need to kill each other well yes but you that's know always been the canon. E- e- even so um you know, like the wicked, wicked Cade tried not to kill his opponent. Well, yes, but he was—he's always been very gentlemanly yes. about his fights. Whereas John McClane does kill to kill. Sure, I suppose as a backup as well. If in the book that Die Hard is based on, there is a bit where the character in that does kill a young girl, and then he is very much like because she's one of the terrorists in the book. You know, for the film, they made them all guys and not teenagers because that way it's more okay to kill them. Absolutely, yeah. But yeah, he was, very, he was very much like he killed her and then later on was like, man, that really sucked. I had to kill that young girl. That's not okay. Fair. 
Well, so, you know, yeah. in the source material, you can say that that is how he would behave. Excellent. So that's fine. I'm, I'm glad the source material agrees. Yeah, so he's going to draw his Barat and I too, I think I said. But obviously, his bull rings aren't short, but they aren't super long. He's going to have to, he's probably going to want to, you know, like draw it up and probably run in and shoot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because it's quite hard to shoot things long distance. I mean, I don't know if you recall the third film where he accu- he does accurately shoot a power cable, but it does take him three shots. But I mean, that is quite small and it was quite far away and he was blinded by a helicopter searchlight. That's how it kills Jeremy Irons. Suck it, Jeremy Irons. <laughs> and your German girlfriend. I think she was German. I don't really know. So yeah, he's probably going to have to whip out, his, whip out his gun, try and run forward a bit and to get to a slightly shorter distance where he can pop off a shot or two. It's a good plan. Uh, yeah, it's a great plan. And he'll be able to easily do it because Clementine will be distracted by a bull running towards her. Yeah, that, that sucks, that does. I feel like because she's aware of the bull, it's not like it's subtle and it's snuck up on her. No, absolutely she's not. She's not currently being distracted by an attack from John McClane. So I feel like she will be able to like get out the way of the bull comfortably. Yeah, I mean, she's um she's been out in the wilderness mm-hmm. and stuff. So she's probably well-versed or, you know, decent enough in dealing with wild animals that have been found in the in the wild. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I don't think that she'd have super issues being able to uh, avoid a bull for the first instance. There you go. So she sort of jumps out the way of a bull while John McClane has been able to get closer to try and make his shot. So what's John McClane going to do? You know, he's run forward. He sees the bull charging at her as well. So he's like, oh, yeah, quid's in. Let's go. As the bull's like running towards her, she manages to kind of dodge out of the way. But now he's going to take some pot shots. Because why wouldn't he? Well, yeah. You know, he's got a gun. He's got a target. There's a, there's a bull that's charged past her once, but it's probably going to come back on the um, on the recoil. Uh, not the recoil. You, you know what I mean. So, you know, bang, bang. Couple of couple of potties. Not like the place where you get your kids to shit. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, do you, I feel like he hasn't got really much of a reason to not hit, does he? No, I don't, I, I don't think he'd get a, a, a lethal shot because, you know, there's still a decent amount of distance and he is, they are both mobile. You know, it's not going to be like a between the eyes. don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that? Yeah. That's me tapping myself between the eyes. It's, it's, it's probably going to be a safe torso wallop yeah sort of like a grazing shot well, I mean, it, it would hurt but not do any like significant damage yeah grazing is an odd word because that implies that it doesn't go into the body which it absolutely would um but yeah non-lethal definitely yeah. but you know definitely uh i don't know i haven't been shot but i assume it's painful i would have thought so yes okay so initially uh clementine would recoil from the pain like ah, maybe stagger slightly has the ball turned round yet? Is it coming back? So sort of kind of running thing, running up, and the ball's like staggered past. The ball would still be turning, I think. Okay, in which case, she would uh, probably turn to base John McLean, maybe try and get a retaliatory shot off at him. Yeah. However, I don't necessarily think she'll hit because, you know, she's sort of trying to do it quick just to sort of get him to stop shooting at her i guess more than anything yeah a defensive like covering fire even though it's covering yourself yeah um, but more than she doesn't have as much time to aim because you know she's unfortunately just been shot yes okay so obviously john's gonna have these bullets whiz past me he's gonna a fucking bitch <laughs> or something, something like that and would he'd probably be like oh yeah come at me bitch or something like that and he'd be like, whose aim's better? And he'd probably just like ready himself up now he's a bit closer, especially seeing that the the bull is on the turn ready to ready for run two. Yeah. He'd be like, This is this is it, isn't it? This is a good moment. I've I've got her got her pinned down. Even if he doesn't kill again right now, he knows that he's gonna have an advantage. So he'll just like probably go for another couple of safer torso shots. But he's not stupid enough to unload all his gun. You know, I don't think more than four shots total up until now is... Oh, likely. okay, we're counting bullets. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, if he's going to take these shots at her whilst under fire, is he going to get hit as well? I mean, he's he's probably been in more gunfights than Clementine has. Probably, yes. Not, But that's not to say that she hasn't been in a few. No, but um, she probably finds the whole ordeal a lot more 
don't get me wrong, I know she's been in some scary situations with zombies and stuff, but there's a difference between shooting at something which could only get you when it's right next to you and being in a gunfight with someone else. Yeah. Um, so I imagine she's probably finding this a, um, mentally more challenging than Bruce Willis is. Uh, sure. Not to mention the fact that the bull which has charged past her once would have been like, you know, done this little spin and rest, been a bit been a bit pointy or whatever but you know he's he's gonna go for round two assuming it, the ball's a he uh, the bull is a he because it is because that's what bulls are that's me yeah. Muppet. yeah we're gonna assume the bull's a he did you just assume that bull's gender but yeah because it's a bull oh, yeah. unless it's a, a trans cis bull I don't, I don't think bulls have the cognitive capacity to define their own genders but if this bull does and it does think of itself as a she then fair play I'm sorry, I don't understand that because you can't convey it because you are a bull. <laughs> so we're just going to go with just going to go with he. Uh, but yeah, he's going to he's going to charge back as well while John McClane and Clementine are you know taking some shots at each other. Yeah. So the bull's going to come back, and this is the thing. It would probably again go for Clementine because she's closest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she's going to be distracted by the fact that her and John McClane are shooting at each other. So probably isn't going to be able to do much about the ball coming back, which means the ball's just going to like take her the fuck out. Yeah, I would, uh, I would be under that impression as well. Balls are quite vicious. I, mean, I don't know if you've seen like the pictures of the ball ring or whatever, but she's probably going to get tossed through the air by a bullhorn. You yeah, know, not like not like super far, but you know, like a, a bad. A, it's it's not fun to be bull to be gored by a bull. I wouldn't have thought. I wouldn't have thought so. No. No, um, don't try at home, kids. Probably. Um, <laughs> Here's some advice: don't get attacked by a bull. Don't get Carry attacked on. by a bull. Yeah, if you're in a death match with John McClane, don't wear red or something that's slightly more red than that. Yeah, so she's going to get thrown up into the air. In this, in, in this, uh, I think you know John. John's going to take the advantage to just get as close as he needs to to get his aim for when she lands. Yeah. So you reckon she's going to get tossed in the air? As she hits the floor, she's going to be a bit of a crumpled heap on the floor, and then John McClane's just going to kill her, like killing shot. Yeah, going to go for the old, um, well, the old double tap. Yeah, um, I mean, I can't argue with you. I, I think she is prob- prob- probably dead. That was a very quick and conclusive fight. I mean, but I guess that is what happens when a young girl gets attacked by a bull. <laughs> yes, I mean, after being shot, it's what happens when you have two very human characters. With guns in an in, in an unpredictable ring, where unfortunately one of them was wearing slightly more red than the other. Yeah, because if neither of them had been wearing red, I would have been prone to flip a coin for it. Because sure. how else would you know? I mean, maybe a ball would go for a smaller target, but well, you know, I would have gone flip a coin. But it's it made logical sense that the ball would go for the person wearing wearing red, as that's what they're what's the word stereotypically known to do. How true this is, we don't know. But we're not bull experts. We're character experts. And that is a very loose definition of the term. (laughs) Because I am nowhere near an expert on any of these characters I bring in. We just, you know, all we need to know is the the basics for a gunfight. Or or a fight to the death. But yeah, I I feel that realistically, to be honest, even of, of those two, in most situations, unless it had been probably like a woods, I think John McClane would probably have had the upper hand. Um... Yeah, although Clem might have been a better if she'd gotten close because she has a knife and is good at using it. Yeah, that's true. I think she would have had certainly like speed and yeah, I think if it had been a more like scenery based arena rather than an open plane with a ball in it, if it had been a bit yeah. more like scenery, she probably would have had the advantage because she's quite nimble and used to survival skills and stuff. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's why I went for woods. I was thinking if it was like outdoor naturey, then she's far more used to using natural terrain to her advantage whereas John McClane's far more used to dealing with cityscapes and uh, open places yeah and obviously as we discussed having been in more gunfights has a cooler head under these gunfights and a, and also discussed probably the more professional training um, mm. I think he would have had a better heads up in most of these situations I've, and unfortunately we got a situation where A John McClane would have had a good Heads up anyway, and then B, there was a bull who made it even worse for for poor Clementine. Um, they don't teach you that in Zombie Survival Club. No. Maybe they should. Maybe they should. 
Zombie and Bull Survival Club. Or Zabsk for short. I think just Zabs sounds better. And then you can dab, but like when you dab, you make like a Z. Sure. Zoltan. Zoltan. <laughs> Bloody love Zoltan. <laughs> yeah, with that, I guess uh, John McClane, he's earned his um, he's mash. earned his mashed potato. He's earned his mish, he's earned his sure mash. An unlikely fellow. But, you know, there we go. Poor, poor dead Clementine. Poor dead Clementine. All right, so uh, <laughs> what's... What's happening? Uh, what's happening next week then, or next time? Before we go on to next time, uh, I just want to quickly say uh, thank you, Lisa, for suggesting Matador Room. You know, another fan suggestion in the arena today. It was an enjoyable arena. It is entirely your fault for suggesting it, uh, that a young girl got trampled to death. Well, you know, well, technically she got shot to death, but you know, <laughs> technically she got shot to death. You know, these these things happen. They happen to the best of us. They sure do. So. Uh, clue for my character for next episode to see if I can stop John McClane getting his mayhem and joining the Hall of Fame is this is a character from a web comic. Okay, I have a feeling I know who that might be, or okay. you know a range of characters who it might be. <laughs> uh, you're you're probably correct. Go for that feeling. <laughs> um, who really enjoy stabbing things? Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure. oh, um, I think I got the right comic and then got the then I now have the character as well. Um who has a very dubious moral compass. How dare you? <laughs> it's it's not dubious at all. It's very well cemented. No, I don't know. No, it's not. You are. And technically he was never proven to be evil. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, so that's my I I think the arena's gonna play a big part in that one as well. Possibly. But equally, I think that he'll do quite well because of the universe he's from. Also, quite possibly. Hmm, could be interesting. Hmm. So, as always, we've been part of the TTSS Productions over on TinkerTailorSoldierSpanish.com, where you can go there and you can listen to all the other wonderful things they do. All the wonderful things they do. You know, such as podcast the podcast. for me uh, and podcast for you. <laughs> Yeah, such as the podcast on parliamentary language, which is doing a lot about the state of the world at the moment, you know. So if you want a good political corona update, then they're the place to go. Fair chairs. Or, you know, if you just want some way to enjoy your isolation, if you are one of the persons, persons? Yeah, one of the persons isolating, then Dr. Wilkie's campaign for better beverages might give you ideas of how to enjoy your time at home. Happy days. Yeah. Speaking of, did I tell you about the really nice cocktail I had there? You definitely told me about some cocktails, but I'm not sure if you yeah, told me I about like a them. super nice one. Go ahead. Tell me about um, it. Well, it, it was uh, Malibu, Greek yogurt, and toffee sauce. Wow, that's you did not tell me about that. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. It's the sort of thing I keep thinking I need to buy some Greek yogurt and toffee sauce and try and make it at home. But I bet if I did it myself, it would not be as nice as the one I had out. It was kind of like, it's kind of like drinking a chocolate eclair. It was the thing they were going for. Okay, yeah. Cool. It, yeah, it was genuinely one of the nicest things I've ever had to drink. Awesome. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, you can contact us on the Twitter at PodcastMMM or you can email us on the email address PodcastMMM at TinkerTaylorSoldierSponge.com Nifty. Yeah, you can do that and you can tell us how you think this episode would have gone if you think we've done it wrong. Or you can suggest characters to take place in the future of episodes. Uh, John McLean, as we mentioned last time, was a fan suggestion. You can also suggest um, arenas for the fight to take place. As you know, today we had a fan suggested arena, which was interesting. Heavily influenced the episode. It did. It really did. You know, uh, we always prefer it when we have fan suggestions because it's nice to know that people are taking an interest and you know validating our existence. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Please validate us. Yeah. So that's sort of it. Any final thoughts for today? I spend about thirty two hours watching Age of Empires over the weekend well over four days and it was awesome cool that's my final thoughts bye catch you later I mean catch you all late